welcome. It is Wednesday, November 8th, and we're here. We've made it back to the Berg after being on the road the last couple weeks. We were gone for a long time, weren't we? We were. It was a whirlwind. If we saw you in Allentown this past weekend, thank you for stopping by our booth. We really enjoyed it. It was a great show. We had some delicious food at Ag Hall, as we hope everyone else did that attended. And, uh, but this week, all hands on deck, we're prepping for our fifth Fifth, right? you believe it? I can't believe we've had five of them. Our fifth cyber toy auction, which begins this Friday, November 10th at noon, uh, Eastern Standard. And this sale is entitled The Antique Toy and Bank Harvest, just in time for fall here. And uh, we have many items for sale, including mechanical and still banks. We have some cast iron and tin toys. We have celluloid, we have layman's wind-up toys, some automotive, and more. So. A little bit of everything, everything very fairly priced. I think it's going to be a good sale. It's a great sale for a beginning collector. A lot of nice items that I think, will, again, will be very uh, affordable. There really are, and you may still register to bid on liveauctioneers.com. So you can bid on PC, you can bid on a Mac, it's super easy. We also have apps that you can download for not only Android, but also iPhones. And you can follow along the entire auction on your app. And once you, you just make an account with an email and you put your address in there, and it is so easy not only to bid while the sale is live, but you can also place bids prior to the sale if you're going to be busy working you know, Friday right on afternoon. your boat or playing in the yard. <laughs> That's the great thing. I mean, yes. the mobility of it all, you can bid from absolutely anywhere. And you can bid from anywhere. You can use your cellular or Wi-Fi signal. You can just jump on. And following the sale, what's also very neat about cyber is the payment is pretty much automatic. So you put your credit card information into Live Auctioneers when you register your account. And following the auction, within a couple days, usually four days following an auction, you'll receive an email uh, with your invoice and there's a blue pay now button and it's literally two clicks. So you click pay now and then you'll confirm your shipping address and that's it. Easy as can be. Shows up at show. your door. Yep, couple days, I'll be there. <laughs> so very automated, simple. And also for cyber, which is really cool, you can text your bids. So if you don't have, if you're worried, if you like Ray said, you're on your boat and you don't have, you know, maybe uh, not necessarily the best Wi-Fi signal or cellular service, you can text bids to 412-841-0623 and we'd be happy to execute them for anyone. And you know, this is cyber toy, so we want you to do it as electronically as possible, but for the technologically challenged, <laughs> You can still call me and talk to me. I'll take your bids. You can give me the lot number and how much you want to bid. He even <laughs> still accepts snail mail and fax. Yes. Time. So you can call me, 412-343-8733. That's an old-fashioned landline. Or, or, drum roll, even better. Fax. You can fax or you can email him at raytoys at AOL.com. Are you making fun of my AOL? For everyone, you know, that used to have dial-up like 15 years ago. That just shows you how long I've been in business. That's my one and only email address. Okay, that's, well, that's like a bad of honor. Okay, I mean it works. I, I will say I did have an AIM account, you know, years ago, even though they're officially shutting too. down this year, which I, I didn't even know they were starting. I heard business. that. I heard that. Yeah, but uh, also speaking of, before we get into the toys, speaking of boats, Ray's got his uh, dolphin bling on over here. My fish. I mean, and I just need to say, like, who does he think he is? Alex from Siesta Key? Hey, I'm a big fish. Uh, where do you think Alex learned all that from? Uncle Ray. Okay. Regular Kelsey over here. Um, I don't know. Uncle Ray. Where's your anchor? Words of wisdom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm good at that. All right. Well, with all that being said, all right. we hope to see you online. We're going to be running the auction once again this Friday, liveauctioneers.com at noon. So, All right, let's get on show some toys. toys. Right, let's start with this. We're going to start Feature this. Feature on the wholesale. Beautiful <laughs> North Pole bank made by J&E Stevens. It's a very, very rare bank, if you haven't seen one before. And this one is in excellent condition. And it also says North Pole Bank right up top, if you weren't able to see that from my other angle I was showing it at. And... Um, yeah, it's just really rare. So it's made of cast iron. So it's really rare. There's a lot to be said about this bank here. And this is sort of going to be like 
sort of a master course in bank collecting. Okay, North Pole Bank, coin goes in the side right here, press it, up comes the American flag. It was originally made to commemorate Admiral Perry reaching the North Pole in 1909. Um, of course, Captain Cook said that he was there a year before. It was always a dispute, but Cook could never prove it. So Perry's the one that gets credit for it. Uh, this bank, along with a, a, a handful, the most notably, generally they're all J&E Stevens banks, um, but the Clown Columbine and Harlequin and the Shoot the Shoot. Uh, those three banks are very rare banks made by J&E Stevens. Um, they also were all made in what we call a second casting, and this is actually a second casting. So this bank wasn't in the original production run of J and E Stevens. Mm -hmm. Again, it was originally produced 1910, uh, and they probably only produced it for a year or two. Um, what happened? J and E Stevens closed down, I believe, in 1932. Uh, generally, all those molds and patterns were split between three employees of the of the um, the foundry, which was in Cromwell, Connecticut. Uh, and they all took the original patterns, so they sort of split up the patterns. Uh, one third of those patterns went to a, a gentleman named Mr. Bowers. I don't know his first name. I was racking my brain for it. I couldn't think of it. In Philadelphia. And he was good friends with Mark Haber mm -hmm. uh, in uh, New Hampshire. And I visited, my father and I actually visited uh, Mark Haber back in the late 70s. Bowers and Habers used these patterns, which were the original patterns from the foundry, to produce those three banks plus a handful of other ones. They match the base tracings exactly. They look exactly the same. They're made from the original pattern. Um, Bob McCumber made one of the first uh, books for bank collecting where you, he actually put the base tracing. So they had the bank and he would trace an original because the reproduction generally is a little smaller because mm -hmm. they would use the, this example to cast the reproduction, every time you do it, it shrinks a little bit. Okay. So you're learning something. Very interesting. <laughs> um, this bank was used, they used actually the original patterns. So it's very difficult for a novice to tell. On this one, there is a couple tip-offs that's very easy. Um, the original, which you, there's maybe eight or 10 original ones out there. Uh, the original one, it's painted with silver. It doesn't have this white on it. The, the figures have faces painted on them. Why don't you show that real close? Yeah, so there's some dog sledding going on on here. Yeah. As you can see up right on the mountain. The so it's sort of like a mountainside, you know, that shows all the, the, like a dog sled and everything. On the original, those are painted with gold highlights, not that copper highlight. Uh, they also have faces painted and there's some blue traces uh, that you'll see on there. Uh, so that's really, when I see that bank, that's what I look for. You're looking for the color. That's the only real way to tell mm -hmm. whether or not it's an original or not. Now, this bank, again, the original was made in 1910, maybe through 1912. This bank, you know, by Bowers, was actually made in the, uh, probably the late 30s, right before the war. So mm -hmm. it's very early. It, you know, the paint's only maybe 20, 30 years different. The American flag paint, as we showed earlier. Glenn goes in, pops up. Show it one more time, because I didn't show it before. It's very, very nice as well on there. So you can see just that detail and it's a very nice bank. Oh, it's a great bank. It was actually one of my favorite banks in my collection, really. I have an original. Uh, but, um, you know, for a collector that doesn't want to spend, you know, well into the five or even low six figures, this bank's very affordable. We'll probably sell for just a little over maybe two to three thousand in that range. And it's just like the original on the shelf. 99.9% .9 of the people who come through your house will know the difference. And it's so, a great time of year for a North Pole bank. Of course, that's why we started our show with it. So, <laughs> so that's our first bank that we that have. That is lot 441 if you're looking for it on Live Auctioneers. Oh, and yeah. next we're moving on oh, to this little elephant with tusks on wheels bank. And this is a beautiful bank as well, circa 1886 made by Janie e. Stevens. And it's also made of cast iron, and it is lot 440 in the sale coming up. So it's nice. It's one of those wheeled banks. Uh, people like banks that move. Not a whole lot of action. You put the coin in the back, and the elephant just raises his head a little bit. It's in a series of all the, uh, the elephant banks. <coughs> With these wheeled banks, uh, the main problem you'll see, well, this bank can have a couple, but generally the wheels can fall off, and maybe one or several will be replaced. Mm -hmm. This one on close inspection, all the wheels are original, 
But if you look at it, and for my ivory, I don't quite like the color of the green. It's just slightly the wrong color is the best way for me to describe it. Hmm. I believe the green on that base has been repainted. But the base is original and the wheels are original, which is 90% of the battle on that bank. It's a very rare bank. So very, I like it. Very, very nice. One of the nicer banks, again, that we have in the sale. That's our little elephant with tusks on wheels, lot 440. If you're looking for him, I'm just gonna roll him out. Roll him on yes. out. <laughs> All, All right. right. We have lot 438 coming up, Girl in Victorian High Chair, which we're staying on our bank theme. This is also a bank made by Janie e. Stevens, also cast iron in fine condition. Yeah, right on the side there, you can see there's a little casting flaw. You see it in the side right there? Mm, this yeah, side. Yeah, right there, right there. Right you see there. it? So that's a little casting flaw. Now that comes from the way the banks were produced. They were they would take the mold, they would press it in, we call it sand, but it's actually, um, it feels sort of like putty. Um, and they would use those molds then to cast these out of cast iron. The molds would deteriorate over time. Uh, and generally, you know, it varies for each casting, but generally you can maybe get about 15 to 20 castings out of a certain set of molds. Uh, that's all. That doesn't seem like that. Yeah, you'd have to redo it. And that's exactly what you have here. Nothing's broken, but just there was either dirt in the mold because, you know, they used it several times. They didn't clean it out enough. And you can sort of see where the metal sort of tried to fill that in, but it never quite yes. made it. Now, that is an issue with the bank, but it's not a major issue. I don't mind casting flaws that much unless they're sort of like in the face or someplace very obvious. On the side here... Yes, obviously you'd rather it not be there, but I do consider that sort of a minor issue with this bank. The big thing with this bank is this has an original dog, little doggy here. Uh, that dog very often will have popped off. It's just riveted on. I can see how Because like happen. a little kid's going to grab that dog. Right. They want to grab that dog and take it home with them. Right. And he is pretty He is pretty loose right here up front, so I could easily see how he can be. So, that little, so what I always do, if you want to tell if it's original or not, is right where it's riveted on, right below the dog there. You want to see it, that the paint goes actually over the rivet. Okay. Uh, and that you think that paint's original. If it's been put over and then repainted, that's a whole other story. You have to look at the color. But if you think the paint on the dog's original, and you can see it goes right over that rivet. You can't even really see the rivet. No. You know, that's a good indication that it's an right original there. dog, which is a very important factor in this bank. The second is the girl's face. You know, this is a little girl that, you know, only a mother and father would love. Uh, I'm looking for, I'm looking for a beautiful Come on. example. Of this. I mean, look at this. This is a very difficult bank. Uh, you know, the one in our collection really isn't a whole lot better than that. I've never seen a truly great one ever. You know, I don't as far as you I think know, because the paint on her is so light. I mean, it's I a very know. it's a light I mean, colored. It's her forehead always gets worn. And you know, it's nice but Again, I always say the money's always in the face. You know, you want a pretty face. Again, you have to be a mother to like that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's still a nice example of this bank. So it is. If you're looking for one All or original. if you like this one, it's lot 438. So that is that one. Ooh, now we have lot 17, dog with pack. And this look guy, at the condition on that. Beautiful condition. There is a smaller one of this. This is the large scale. Now, actually, I'm going to give everyone a little insider tip. This is only for people that are watching our broadcast live because this was something I just discovered when we picked this bank up to do this broadcast. This is actually an extremely rare variation of the dog with pack. Uh, and it actually came from the Manuel Rodriguez collection. It did. Now, what makes it so rare? Okay. This is a still bank, okay? And still banks, you would just put your money in, okay? But very often, I'd be saving my pennies, and my little sister here would come in, and she'd be like, I want to take some money from my brother. And she'd take that bank, she'd turn it over, and she'd just shake the pennies out. Still banks, they don't really have anything to keep it in. Mechanicals are very often going to have what we call as a baffle, uh -huh. which makes it difficult to shake the money out. Okay, now this bank, very difficult to see. But this bank actually has a movable baffle. It has a stopper. The, You're not it, getting any money out of this one. That's right. You aren't taking anything from me. No, this one might be hard because I think it's going to... Okay. Yeah, take see, a little right coin. right here. Here, put a little coin. Show that open. So it will go in. It opens. Bang, and then, then when, if the bank's upright, it closes, closes up. And if you turn it upside down, you can't get the money out. 
it's How about a that? dog. So the only way you could get the money out is you'd have to have a screwdriver, which is harder to do. But you know, you develop most all the banks, screwdrivers. you can sit there and just shake all the coins <laughs> out. And I come in, I'm like, I thought I had money in there. And you're like, no, you had nothing in there. No, I will say, you know, I mean, the other piggy banks that were newer, you know, you could just take a hammer to them and <laughs> smash them. But Whoa. this cast iron would make it a little different. Although some a kids try harder. to do it, that, that's what makes them rare. That is true. <laughs> oh, the, this is really in pristine condition. Yeah, so. beautiful bank. Extremely rare. You know, Some people would even term that a semi-mechanical bank just because of the, uh, the, uh, the baffle or the, the stopper that they put in it. Now, another interesting thing is this actually came from the Manuel Rodriguez collection, uh, which is a collection that uh, RSL handled. Manuel Rodriguez was a real gentleman, uh, old-time collector. And he was, he was located in Paris. Uh, mm -hmm. Leon, Steven, and I had the privilege of going over there, packing up his collection. It took a couple trips to get everything. He had banks and tin toys. But he had a lot of great cast iron banks. And the way he received most, most of those is he was good friends with Ed Mosler, which is Mosler Safe Company. And Ed Mosler, mainly in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s, he was the premier collector of mechanical banks out there. And he would basically have people from all over the world looking for banks for him. And Emmanuel Rodriguez in particular found a lot of European banks. And he would bring these European banks which an American collector never saw and he would trade them for great cast iron banks. And there's one story of um, him trading a cross leg minstrel for a, uh, which is a rare bank still, but maybe sells for a couple thousand dollars. And he actually traded a cross leg minstrel for a uh, girl skipping rope and a Mikado, <laughs> which in the, the even in the condition they are today, you know those banks are probably about forty thousand dollars for the pair. Um, so it, it was just shows you how things change in rarity at the time. You know, collectors never saw any of those European banks, and right. it was like, and there was a big push. You wanted to be the first one to have it. So just a little side note on Mr. Rodriguez. Very interesting. Also, what do you think this dog is carrying in his pack? I don't know. Probably blankets. <laughs> what do you think he's carrying? I don't know, but it's kind of interesting. Tobacco? It's tied with a bow. I mean, well, dog with pack, what's in the pack? <laughs> well, they did use them, you know, in, in the mountainous regions, they'd use them to carry, you know, loads. So, again, it could be almost anything. Hmm. Might have been whiskey. We'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dog with pack. It's lot 17 again. You're searching so that was our nice him. sampling of banks. We have a lot of still banks, a lot of mechanical banks. Uh, they basically start the sale, um, and then we move into the toys. We do. So we are going to move in, and we need our little tray. We have some toys to demonstrate, which is exciting. This is a Guntherman wind-up dog biting a man. You wind it up. Here, let's hold it steady. This is going to be a... Well, I knew I was gonna have a hold on. There he goes. Oh, it's hard to do him up right now. There, I'll hold the tray, Ray. You can make him There work. we go, there we go. Look at that Cujo go. I know, right? That's <laughs> what I told Ray right before we started this broadcast. I said, you know what this toy reminds me of? It reminds me of the movie Co Cujo, if anyone's ever seen it, where the dog terrorizes everyone. <laughs> he looks pretty terrorized. Great <laughs> action. Nice German uh, tin lithograph toy. Nice subject matter. If you like dogs, he is. fights. He's about six and a half inches high, and he's marked made in Germany on the bottom or on, on his the, leg. One of the legs, I think. I uh, believe so. See, somewhere. He's marked made in Germany, so, and uh, he's lot 386. Cujo action. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Next, we're moving on to another one that's really fun. This is Joe Penner, and with his duck is the technical name for this. It was made by Marks. We're going to show you how it works in a minute, but it's another wind-up toy, and it's made of tin and sheet steel. It's about eight and a half inches high, and um, he was actually a vaudeville comedian who was on the radio, and... He really had a couple phrases that, or catchphrases, I guess you could say. And, uh, hey lady, you want to buy a duck? Sure. 
It's only $8,500. You nasty man. Me? Those are a couple hey, comments that Joe Penner was famous for. Yes. But I do actually have a duck for sale. Now, this isn't in the cyber sale, but it was just a little aside when we were talking about buying a duck. It's a little Gunterman hand winded, hand painted wind up toy. There you go, look at him go. Little <laughs> mama duck with the geese running in front of him. Geese go up and down, or little baby ducks. I thought it was a really pretty toy. And it's not $8,000. No, that's why I said it, the other tagline. It could be yours for 675 That sounds more appropriate. Pretty, pretty toy. Real nice. That's for sure. And he works too. And on the side here, it does say, want to buy a duck sincerely, Joe Penner. I want to try a show? Yeah. We never have luck showing toys in this show. I know. We try. Look at Joe go! He's <laughs> going nowhere fast. Yeah, right? he just dealt him. Look at him go! <laughs> the cigar moves, the hat goes up and down. You know, Mark's uh, they made some great toys. Uh, this is one of their famous toys. But they made a whole series of these type of walking toys. But this is probably one of the most elaborate. Little Joe Penner and his duck. He did. I know. And this is really cool, too. When we were doing some research about Joe Penner. You've never seen Joe Penner before. That is him right there with his duck. Because I think he said, what, 30s? That's when he was yes. He was popular. And I must say, I never really knew much about Joe Penner, except for the toy. I think he was a little before your time, right? Thank you. <laughs> so that's Mr. Joe Penner. And what's also neat about him is uh, we don't really have the audio to show you on the show right now, but if you Google him, on, and he comes up on YouTube, and you can listen to some of his old radio shows. So if you would like to hear him deliver those taglines, he I think he does a little bit of a better job than we do. Maybe. I don't know. You but... don't want to buy my duck? <laughs> <laughs> Not for the price that you were trying to offer it for. Come right? on. <laughs> Come on, nasty. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So he was lot 392, and next we're moving on to lot 368. Another Mark's toy. This is a drummer boy. That's for the soldier guys. Yes. For our soldier collectors out there. How can we forget our soldier collectors? This is made by Mark's. It's a wind-up toy as well, obviously. And he's a little taller than the last two. He's about nine inches high. He can bang that drum all day long. He does. This is a little bit more. Is They made a number of drumming toys. Uh, this one actually he has movable eyes. It's a little shorter, a little plume in the side of his head, uh, or, or bearskin cap, I guess it should be. Um, oh, he does. But, He's fuzzy. I didn't realize that. Nice toy. A lot of Mark's toys. A lot of wind up in his sale. He's There's got a, a little. Lot of noise. He's got. He's got a real plume over there. Oh. See that? Very nice. Very good. Okay, that's our drummer boy. Also nice with the holidays coming up. If you're looking for a little drummer boy. And next, we are moving on. Boy, I like this little the guy. toy right after Bree's heart. This is lot 327. This is Monkey with Pint. Otherwise, known, saw... otherwise known as a monkey drinking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, if you saw our last broadcast where I think this little, he needs a bud man stun. He does. Where's my bud? I know. Where's the bud? Look at that little Where monkey. Celluloid wind up clothes. He is, he is. So let's wind him up. I know we have a key. There's a key. Hold on. We were using it for the duck as well. So wait till you see this one. Hold on. Let me hold this tray up again. I really love this one. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look how charming he is. He's doing a little shake. He's dumping beer all over himself, it looks like, or some undescribed. I have no <laughs> idea why you'd like that toy that much. <laughs> <laughs> it's monkey with pint. What, and did, what did you go as Halloween as? A monkey. What? Oh, I guess. Perfect. <laughs> yes. You he would have, I could have that. taken him on Halloween to Halloween yeah. with me. Perfect. So, but what's neat about him is that he's made of tin fabric and celluloid. And celluloid was really uh, the first commercial use for it prior to, about 20 years prior to when it was used for toys, was it was used for dentures. So the original know. dentures were made out of celluloid. And what really changed uh, the celluloid market and why they stopped making toys was because in the 30s and 40s, parents really 
uh, tried to, they, it was flammable. So they tried to eradicate, highly flammable. highly flammable. So they tried to eradicate the use of all celluloid. And the last, um, I mean, I don't even know if you can call it a toy, but the last thing that was made even resembling a toy was in 1947, which was a rattle. And really after that is where it kind of morphed into more of the, not quite what we see today, um, is, but it was more plastics. It becomes more of a plastic. It's and really plastic. The, uh, the also a fun fact, the only thing really that's widely commercially produced still of celluloid today are ping pong balls. You ever light one on fire? No. When we were at school, that's what we did. You light a ping pong ball on fire, it's like a magic ping pong ball. Would it just disintegrate? Yeah, pretty much. A big ball of flame. When we were in school, we threw them into red solo cups. That's what we, that's what we did with ping pong balls. Hence, one of her favorite <laughs> toys. He's so cute. Oh come on! Everyone, everyone threw a couple ping pong balls in their day, or lit them on fire. I guess that's true. That but is uh, true. so that's our little bunkie and our celluloid story. Um, he once again is lot three twenty seven, and staying in that category, we have two. Santa wind-up toys that were also made of celluloid and one is lot 321 and um, I actually don't have the other lot listed right in front of me. No, the same lot. They're both they, in the same. Oh, okay. They're both in the same lot. Excuse me. Watch this. We got Bill and Santa's. <laughs> okay. That's a little, that was a little close for comfort there. I gotta go around. Fun wind-up toys. We're starting to get into the holiday spirit around here. We are. We're trying to. It's coming up. It's getting closer. So those are our Santas, and they're, like Ray said, they're both in the same lot, and they are lot 321. Lots of celluloid in the sale. And the last item we have to show you today is sleeping Santa. Santa's resting up for his big night. He is. The He's elves like, have been, oh, I gotta do it again around the world. Elves have been mm. working very hard around the, this past year for Santa, getting ready for the holidays. And <coughs> what's interesting about this one is that he's made of chalk. They're made by Ban Thrifco, uh, which made a whole bunch of banks. It's actually marked him back 1948. So for all you post-war babies, this is maybe you got this when you were a small child. Um, nice bank, real holiday. A lot of people have this and it crosses over into the holiday collectibles. It does, and it's a great decoration. It was very appropriate. Sitting back, get ready for his big trip. <laughs> <laughs> he very much is. So our Santa, sleeping Santa made of chalk is lot 176. And you can jump on liveauctioneers.com and you can search or on the app, like we said, or on a computer um, and search for Cyber Toys and Santa and all of the Santa lots will pop up in our sale. That's right. And also, I don't, you can't see it super, super close, but we wanted to point out this new poster behind us that was a purchase at the Chicago Toy Show. Our purchase. And it is from a, a, a toy show for the Barinholtz collection in, the, in 1980. And some of his uh, tin toys were featured on there. It was out of St. Louis. And it it's, it says up top, I don't know if you can quite see it all the way, but to Toys at Larmere, November 23rd through January 4th um, at the Larmere International Sculptural Park. So Yeah, and Barney Barinholtz, he wrote the book American Antique Toys. You should grab it over there. And that's still by far the best reference book when it comes to early American toys. Um, Barney's collection was sold around 1990, I believe, 91, 90. And they were distributed across the country. But I guess in the 80s, uh, the collection went on show, which I didn't really know that they did that. I didn't know that he lent it out to a museum, but I guess he did. Uh, but really a world-class collection, and everyone that has some Baron Holtz toys would consider themselves very lucky. It does. And so if you have any of the toys on this poster, or if you love the poster, it is for sale. So uh, price available upon request if you're interested. But we thought that it was appropriate for a toy broadcast here, and it was new, so we wanted to show everyone. Exactly. And, like I said, that's really sums it up for what we had to show you today. It went so quickly. And, but uh, our next 
old toy soldier magazine will be on stands and online on our website within the next week or so so if you are a subscriber you can look out for that if you're not you can subscribe on oldtoysoldier.com and you can view it online or we'll mail it right to your home and we have a little preview of the cover right here oh, but this right. is very very in early that's stages early proof. so yeah. it's actually glossy the real cover chelsea it, pensioners we're about to sign off on it tomorrow but i figured we'd show it 60, so our, i think it's 68 pages it is that's our last proof 32. there uh if you weren't if you made it to the chicago toy soldier show <coughs> there's a whole show report in there if you didn't uh, there's you could definitely read all about it and there's some pictures of, of people who attended so you can definitely look for yourself yeah, yeah well, we still do printed hard copies so you can still subscribe like a good old-fashioned magazine or you can get it online if you like yeah so that's oldtoysoldier.com once again and then while we are on the soldier kick our next old toy soldier auction huge huge auction there's over 1800 lots the catalog where is in the final stages right now as well we don't have a proof to show you but we're going to be signing on off on that soon and we'll be putting that in the mail within the next two weeks maybe the next week but i don't want to look for it in the next coming weeks couple weeks <laughs> and that sale is december 1st 2nd and 3rd is it it is entitled rightfully so for the winter the wonderful world of toy soldiers if you're a toy soldier collector cannot stress enough there is something in this sale for you the prices are vary all across the board and uh there's some really really rare sets in there there's some common sets there's sets everywhere in between and once again you can bid on liveauctioneers.com for that just search old toy soldier uh, the catalog is online right now and we will be sending out you can look out for an email blast next week with a direct link to it but you can search for it yourself now uh, before the printed catalog comes out and with that being said, thank you for watching. We hope to see everyone behind the computer on the other side, I guess we should say, of cyberspace this Friday, November 10th at noon for the Cyber Toy Auction. If you have any questions, you can call or email us. We're still accepting bids and we'd be happy to help walk you through getting online or downloading the app and uh, happy collecting. Everyone have fun at the sale. Thank you. Bye now.